Hello, this is this is Tom. I'm gonna I'm gonna be literally reading a book because I want to read a book. Um, and why not make it a YouTube video? Because you know why not? So, uh, name of this book called Warriors Into the Wild by Aaron Hunter, pseudonym for a bunch of authors. Um, this is the first book in a series of six books in a series of, like, I think seven series. So, like, 42 books at least. Um, I'm just going to be reading the main series books. I might go on to super editions and novellas, mangas, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to be reading this book because why not? <laughs> Free money. Uh, it's not even money. It's just not monetized. This is literally. It might as well be an audio book, but awful. <laughs> uh, prologue. A half moon glowed on smooth granite boulders, turning them silver. The silence was broken only by the ripple of water from the swift black river and the whisper of trees in the forest beyond. There was a stirring in the shadows, and from all around, lithe dark shapes crept stealthily over the rocks. Unsheathed claws glinted in the moonlight. Wary eyes flashed like amber. And then, as if on a silent signal, the creatures leaped at each other, and suddenly the rocks were alive with wrestling, screeching cats. At the center of the frenzy of fur and claws, a massive dark tabby pinned a bracken-colored tom to the ground and drew up his head triumphantly. Oh, cart, the tabby growled. How dare you hunt in our territory? The sunny rocks belong to Thunder Clan. After tonight, Tiger Claw, this will be just another River Clan hunting ground, the bracken colored Tom spat back. A warning yowl came from the shore, shrill and anxious. Look out! More River Clan warriors are coming! Tiger Claw turned to see sleek, wet bodies sliding out of the water below the rocks. The drenched River Clan warriors bounded silently up the shore and hurled themselves into battle without even stopping to shake the water from their fur. The dark tabby glared down at Oakheart. You may swim like otters, but you and your warriors do not belong in this forest. He drew back his lips and showed his teeth as the cat struggled beneath him. The desperate scream of a ThunderClan she-cat rose above the clamor. A wiry RiverClan tom had pinned the brown warrior flat on her belly. Now he lunged toward her neck with jaws still dripping from his swim across the river. Tigerclaw heard the cry and let go of Oakheart. With a mighty leap, he knocked the enemy warrior away from the she-cat. Quick, Mousefur, run! he ordered, before turning on the River Clan Tom who had threatened her. Mousefur scrambled to her paws, wincing from a deep gash on her shoulder, and raced away. Behind her, Tigerclaw spat with rage as the River Clan Tom sliced open his nose. Blood blinded him for an instant, but he lunged forward regardless and sank his teeth into the hind leg of his enemy. The River Clan cat squealed and struggled free. Tigerclaw! The yowl came from a warrior with a tail as red as fox fur. This is useless. There are too many River Clan warriors. No red tail. Thunder Clan will never be beaten. Tiger Claw yelled back, leaping to Red Tail's side. This is our territory. Blood was welling around his broad black muzzle, and he shook his head impatiently, scattering scarlet drops onto the rocks. Thunder Clan, honor your courage, Tiger Claw. But we cannot afford to lose any more of our warriors. Red Tail urged. Blue Star would never expect her warriors to fight against these impossible odds. We will have another chance to avenge this defeat. He met Tiger Claw's amber eye gaze steadily, then reared away and sprang onto a boulder at the edge of the trees. Retreat, Thunder Clan! Retreat! He yowled. At once, his warriors squirmed and struggled away from their opponents. Spitting and snarling, they backed toward Red Tail. For a heartbeat, the River Clan cats looked confused. The River Clan cats looked confused. Was this battle so easily won? Then Oakheart yowled a jubilant cry. As soon as they heard him, the River Clan warriors raised their voices and joined their deputy in caterwauling their victory. Red Tail looked down at his warriors. With a flick of his tail, he gave the signal, and the Thunder Clan cats dived down the far side of the sunny rocks, then disappeared into the trees. Tiger Claw followed last. He hesitated at the edge of the forest and glanced back at the blood stained battlefield. His face was grim, his eyes furious slits, then he leaped after his clan into the silent forest. In a deserted clearing, an old gray she-cat sat alone, staring up at the clear night sky. 
All around her in the shadows she could hear the breathing and stirring of sleeping cats. A small tortoiseshell she-cat emerged from a dark corner, her paw, step, her paw steps quick and soundless. A gray cat dipped her head in greeting. How is mouse fur? she meowed. Her wounds are deep, Blue Star, answered the tortoiseshell, settling herself on the night-cool grass. But she is young and strong. She will heal quickly. And the others? They will all recover, too. Blue Star sighed. We are lucky not to have lost any of our warriors this time. You are a gifted medicine cat, Spotleaf. She tilted her head again and studied the stars. I am deeply troubled by tonight's defeat. ThunderClan has not been beaten in its own territory since I became leader, she murmured. These are difficult times for our clan. The season of New Leaf is late and there have been fewer kits. ThunderClan needs more warriors if it is to survive. But the year is only just beginning, Spotleaf pointed out calmly. There will be more kits when Dre Greenleaf comes. The gray cat twitched her broad shoulders. Perhaps, but training our young to become warriors takes time. If ThunderClan is to defend its territory, it must have new warriors as soon as possible. Are you asking StarClan for answers? Mount Spotleaf gently, following Blue Star's gaze and staring up at the swath of stars glittering in the dark sky. It is at times like this we need the words of ancient warriors to help us. Has StarClan spoken to you? Blue Star asked. Not, so, not for some moons, Blue Star. Suddenly, a shooting star blazed over the treetops. Spotleaf's tail twitched and the fur along her spine bristled. Blue Star's ears pricked, but she remained silent as Spotted Leaf continued to gaze upward. After a few moments, Spotted Leaf lowered her head and turned to Blue Star. It was a message from Star Clan, she murmured. A distant look came into her eyes. Fire alone can save our clan. Fire? Blue Star echoed. But fire is feared by all the clans. How can it save us? Spotted Leaf shook her head. I do not know, she admitted. But this is the message Star Clan has chosen to share with me. The Thunder Clan leader fixed her clear blue eyes on the medicine cat. You have never been wrong before, Spotted Leaf, she meowed. If Star Clan has spoken, then it must be so. Fire will save our clan. Alright, that was chapter chapter zero, because that was that was the prologue. <laughs> uh I'm gonna try and give them more distinct voices. But let's move on to chapter one. Try not to waste your time. It was very dark. Rusty could sense something was near. The young Tomcat's eyes opened wide as he scanned the dense undergrowth. This place was unfamiliar, but the strange sense drew him onward, deeper into the shadows. His stomach growled, reminding him of his hunger. He opened his jaws slightly to let the warm smells of the forest reach the scent glands on the roof of his mouth. Musty odors of leaf mold mingled with the tempting aroma of a small furry creature. Suddenly, a flash of gray raced past him. Rusty stopped listening. Stopped. <coughs> Rusty stopped still, listening. It was hiding in the leaves less than two tail lengths away. Rusty knew it was a mouse. He could feel the rapid pulsing of a tiny heart deep within his ear fur. He swallowed, stifling his rumbling stomach. Soon his hunger would be satisfied. Slowly, he lowered his body into position, crouching for the attack. He was downwind of the mouse. He knew it was not aware of him. With one final check on his prey's position, Rusty pushed back hard on his haunches and sprang, kicking up leaves on the forest floes as he rose. <coughs> kicking up leaves on the forest floor as he rose. The mouse died for cover, heading toward a hole in the ground heading toward a hole in the ground, but Rusty was already on top of it. He scooped it into the air, hooking the helpless creature with his thorn-sharp claws, flinging it up high, flinging it up, <coughs> flinging it up high into an arc onto the leaf-covered ground. The mouse landed dazed, but alive. It tried to run, but Rusty snatched it up again. He tossed the mouse once more, this time a little farther away. The mouse managed to scramble a few paces before Rusty caught up with it. Suddenly, a noise roared nearby. Rusty looked around, and as he did, did so, the mouse was able to pull away from his claws. When Rusty turned back, he saw it dart into the darkness among the tangled roots of a tree. Angry, Rusty gave up the hunt. 
He spun around, his green eyes glaring, intent on searching out the noise that had cost him his kill. The sound rattled on, becoming more familiar. Rusty blinked open his eyes. The forest had disappeared. He was inside a hot and airless kitchen, curled in his bed. Moonlight filtered through the window, casting shadows on the smooth, hard floor. The noise had been the rattle of hard, dried pellets of food as they were tipped into his dish. Rusty had been dreaming. Lifting his head, he rested his chin on the side of his bed. His collar rubbed uncomfortably around his neck. In his dream, he f had felt fresh air ruffling the soft fur where the collar usually pinched. Rusty rolled onto his back, savoring the dream for a few more moments. He could still smell mouse. It was the third time since full moon that he'd had that dream. And every time the mouse had escaped his grasp. He licked his lips. From his bed he could smell the bland odor of his food. His owners always refilled his dish before they went to bed. The dusty smell chased away the warm sense of his dreams. But the hunger rumbled on in his stomach, so Rusty stretched the sleep out of his limbs and padded across the kitchen floor to his dinner. The food felt dry and tasteless on his tongue. Rusty reluctantly, reluctantly swallowed one more mouthful, and he turned away from the food dish and pushed his way through the cat flap, hoping that the smell of the garden would bring back the feelings from his dream. Outside, the moon was bright. It was raining lightly. Rusty stalked down the tiny garden, following the starlit gravel path, feeling the stones cold and sharp beneath his paws. He made his dirt beneath a large bush with glossy green leaves and heavy purple flowers. Their sickly sweet scent cloyed the damp air around him, and he curled his lip to drive the smell out of his nostrils. Afterward, Rusty settled down on top of one of the posts in the fence that marked the limits of his garden. It was a favorite spot of his, as he could see right into the neighboring gardens as well as into the dense green forest on the other side of the garden fence. The rain had stopped. Behind him, the closed cropped lawn was bathed in moonlight, but beyond his fence, the woods were full of shadows. Rusty stretched his head forward to take a sniff of the damp air. His skin was warm and dry under his thick coat, but he could feel the weight of the raindrops that sparkled on his ginger fur. He heard his owners giving him one last call from the back door. If he went to them now, they would greet him, greet him with gentle words and caresses and welcome him onto their bed where he would curl, purring warm in the crook of a bent knee. But this time, Rusty ignored his owner's voices and turned his gaze back to the forest. The crisp smell of woods had grown fresher after the rain. Suddenly, the fur on his spine prickled. Was something moving out there? Was something watching him? Rusty stared ahead, but it was impossible to see or smell anything up in the dark, tree-scented air. He lifted his chin boldly, stood up, it stretched, one paw gripping each corner of the fence post as he strained his legs and arched his back. He closed his eyes and breathed in the smell of woods once more. It seemed to promise him something, tempting him onward into the whispering shadows. Tensing his muscles, he crouched for a moment. Then he leaped lightly down and into the rough gra grass on the other side of the garden fence. As he landed, the bell on his collar rang out through the still night air. "'Where are you off to, Rusty?' meowed a familiar voice behind him. Rusty looked up. A young black-and-white cat was balancing ungracefully on the fence. "'Hello, Smudge,' Rusty replied. <laughs> "'You're not going into the woods, are you?' Smudge amber eyes were huge. "'Just for a look,' Rusty promised, shifting uncomfortably. "'You wouldn't get me in there. It's dangerous,' Smudge wrinkled his black nose with distaste. "'Henry said he went into the woods once.' The cat lifted his head and gestured with his nose over the rows of fences towards the garden where Henry lived. That fat old tabby never went into the woods, Rusty scoffed. He's hardly been beyond his own garden since his trip to the vet. All he wants to do is eat and sleep. No, really, he caught a robin there, Smudge insisted. Well, if he did, then it was before the vet. Now he complains about birds because they disturb his dozing. Well, anyway, Smudge went on, ignoring the scorn in Rusty's mew. Henry told me there were all sorts of dangerous animals out there. Huge wildcats who eat live rabbits for breakfast and sharpen their claws on old bones. I'm only going for a look around, Rusty meowed. I won't stay long. Well, don't say I didn't warn you, 
pro smudge, the black and white cat turned and plunged off the fence back down into his own garden. Rusty sat down in the coarse grass beyond the garden fence. He gave his shoulder uh, uh, burp. <laughs> he gave his shoulder a nervous lick and wondered how much of Smudge's gossip was true. Suddenly, the movement of a tiny creature caught his eye. He watched it scuttle under some branches. Instinct made him drop into a low crouch. With one slow paw after another, he drew his body forward through the undergrowth. Ears pricked, nostrils flared, eyes unblinking, he moved toward the animal. He could see it clearly now, sitting up among the marred branches, nibbling on a large seed held between his paws. It was a mouse. Rusty rocked his haunches from side to side, preparing to leap. He held his breath in case his bell rang again. Incitement coursed through him, making his heart pound. This was even better than his dreams. Then a sudden noise of cracking twigs and crunching leaves made him jump. His bell jangled treacherously, and the mouse darted away into the thickest tangle of brown, the bramble bush. Rusty stood very still and looked around. He could see the white tip of a red bushy tail through a clump of, through a clump of tall ferns up ahead. He smelled a strong, strange scent, definitely a meat-eater, but neither cat nor dog. Distracted, Rusty forgot about the mouse and watched the red tail curiously. He wanted a better look. All of Rusty's senses strained ahead as he prowled forward. Then he detected another noise. It came from behind, but sounded mute, muted and distant. He swelled his ears backward to hear it better. Paw steps, he wondered, but he kept his eyes fixed on the strange red fur up ahead and continued to creep onward. It was only when the faint rustling behind him became a loud and fast approaching leaf crackle that Rusty realized he was in danger. The creature hit him like an explosion, and Rusty was thrown sideways into a clump of nettles. Side twisting and yowling, he tried to throw off the attacker that had fastened itself onto his back. It was gripping him with incredibly sharp claws. Rusty could feel spiked teeth prickling at his neck. He writhed and squirmed from whisker to tail, but he couldn't free himself. For a second, he felt helpless. Then he froze. Thinking fast, he flipped over onto his back. He knew instinctively how dangerous it was to expose his soft belly, but it was his only chance. He was lucky. The ploy seemed to work. He heard a huuuuh beneath him as the breath was knocked out of the attacker. It probably sounded more like a <sighs> Thrashing fiercely, Rusty managed to wriggle free. Without looking, he... Without looking back, he sprinted toward his home. Behind him, a rush of paw steps told Rusty his attacker was giving chase. Even though the pain from scratches stung beneath his fur, Rusty decided he would rather turn and fight than let himself be jumped on again. He skidded to a stop, spun around, and faced his pursuer. It was another kitten, with a thick coat of shaggy gray fur, strong legs, and a broad face. In a heartbeat, Rusty smelled that it was a tom, and sensed the power in the sturdy shoulders underneath the soft coat. Then the kitten crashed into Rusty at full pelt. Taken by surprise at Rusty's turnabout, it fell back into a dazed heap. The impact knocked the breath out of Rusty, and he staggered. He quickly found his footing and arched his back, puffing out his orange fur, ready to spring onto the other kitten. But his attacker simply sat up and began to lick a forepaw, all signs of aggression gone. Rusty felt strangely disappointed. Every part of him was tense, ready for battle. Hi there, kitty pet! Riley Gray Tom cheerily. You put up quite a fight for a tame kitty. Rusty remained on tiptoe for a second, wondering to, whether to attack anyway. Then he remembered the strength he had felt in the, this kitten's paws when he had pinned him to the ground. He dropped onto his pads, loosened his muscles, and let his spine unbend. And I'll fight you again if I have to, he growled. I'm Great Paw, by the way. The gray kitten went on, ignoring Rusty's threat. I'm trained to be a Thunderclan warrior. Rusty remained silent. He didn't understand what this gray what's-it was meowing about, but he sensed the threat had passed. He hid his confusion by leaning down to lick his ruffled chest. What's a kitty pet like you doing out in the woods? Don't you know it's dangerous? Asked Graypaw. If you're the most dangerous thing the woods has to offer, then I think I can handle it. Rusty bluffed. Grandpa looked up at him for a moment, narrowing his big yellow eyes. Oh, I'm far from the most dangerous. If I were even half a warrior, I'd have given an intruder like you some real wounds to think about. Rusty felt a thrill of fear at these ominous words. What did this cat mean by intruder? 
<laughs> anyway, now Grey Paw using his sharp teeth to tug a clump of grass from between his claws. I didn't think it was worth hurting you. You're obviously not from one of the other clans. Other clans? Rusty echoed, confused. Grey Paw loud. Loud, an impatient hissed. You must have heard of the full warrior clans that hunt around here. I belong to Thunder Clan. The other clans are always trying to steal prey from my territory, especially Shadow Clan. They are so fierce they would have ripped you to shreds, no questions asked. Grey pa paused to spit angrily and continued. They come to take prey that is rightfully ours. It's the job of the Thunder Clan warriors to keep them out of our territory. When I finish my training, I'll be so dangerous, I'll have the other clans shaking in their flea bitten skins. They won't dare come near us then. Rusty narrowed his eyes. This must be one of the wildcats Smudge has warned him about. Living rough in the woods, hunting and fighting each other for every last scrap of food. Yet Rusty didn't feel scared. In fact, it was hard to not admire it. Not to admire this confident kitten. So you're not a warrior yet? He asked. Why? Did you think I was? He popped her proudly, then he shook his wide furry head. I will be a real warrior for ages. I have to go through training first. The kids have to be six moons old before they can even begin training. Tonight is my first night out as an apprentice. Why don't you why don't you find yourself an owner with a nice cozy house instead? Your life would be much easier. Rusty meowed. There are plenty of house folk who are taking a kitten like you. All you'd have to do is sit where they can see you and come and get for a couple of days. And they'd feed me pellets that look like rabbit droppings and soft slop. Ray probably interrupted. No way. I can't think of anything worse than being a kitty brat. They're nothing but two-legged toys. Eating stuff that doesn't look like food. Making dirt in a box of gravel. Sticking their noses all outside only when two legs allow them. That's no life. Out here is wild. And it's free. We come as go as we please. He finished his speech with a proud spit. <laughs> and meowed mischievously. Until you've tasted a fresh killed mouse, you haven't lived. Have you ever tasted a mouse? No. Rusty admitted a little defensively. Not yet. I guess you'll never understand. Great Paw sighed. You weren't born wild. It makes a difference. It makes a big difference. You need to be born with warrior blood in your veins. Or feel the wind in your whiskers. Kitties born into a two-legged nest could never feel the same way. Rusty remembered the way he had fell in his dream. That's not true, he bowed indignantly. Graypaw did not reply. He suddenly stiffened mid-lick, one paw still raised and sniffed the air. I smell cats from my clan, he hissed. You should go. They won't be pleased to find you hunting our territory. Rusty looked around, wondering how Graypaw knew any cat was approaching. He couldn't smell anything different on the leaf-scented breeze, but his fur stood on end at the note of urgency in Graypaw's voice. Quick! hissed Graypaw again. Run! Rusty prepared to spring into the bushes, not knowing which way he was safe to jump. Jump. He was too late! A voice meowed from behind him, firm and menacing. What's going on here? Rusty turned to see a large gray she-cat strolling majestically out from the undergrowth. She was magnificent. White hair streaked her muzzle, and an ugly scar parted the fur across his shoulders. But her smooth gray coat shone like the silver in the moonlight. Blue star! Beside Rusty, Grey Paw crouched down and r narrowed his eyes. He crouched even lower when a second cat, a handsome golden tabby, followed the gray cat into the clear. You shouldn't be so near two leg place, Grey Paw! growled the golden tabby angrily, narrowing his green eyes. I know, Lion Hot. Huh? I'm sorry. Graypaw looked down at his paws. Rusty copied Graypaw and crouched low to the forest floor, his ears twitching nervously. These cats had an air of strength he had never seen in any of his garden friends. <laughs> garden friends. <laughs> Maybe what Smudge had warned him about was true. Who is this? Asked the she-cat. Rusty flinched as he she turned her gaze on him. Her piercing blue eyes made him feel even more vulnerable. He's no threat. Mewed Graypaw quickly. He's not another clan warrior, just a two legged pet from beyond our territories. Just a two legged pet? Those words inflamed Rusty, but he held his tongue. The warning look in Blue, Blue Star's stare told him that she had observed the anger in his eyes. He looked away. This is Blue Star. She is leader of my clan. 
Grandpaw hissed to Rusty under his breath. And Lightheart, he's my mentor, which means he'll be training. He's training me to be a warrior. Thank you for the introduction, Graypaw. <laughs> Meow Lionheart coolly. Blue Star was still staring at Rusty. You fight well for a two-legged pet. She meowed. Rusty and Graypaw exchanged confused glances. How could she know? We've been watching you both, Blue Star went on, as if she had read their thoughts. We wondered how you would deal with an intruder, Graypaw. You attacked him bravely. Graypaw looked pleased at Blue Star's praise. Sit up now, both of you. Blue Star looked at Rusty. You too, Cootie Pet. He sat up immediately and held Blue Star's gaze evenly as she addressed him. You reacted well to the attack, Kitty Pet. Graypaw is stronger than you, but you used your wits to defend yourself, and you turned to face him when he chased you. I have not seen a Kitty Pet do, Kitty Pet do that before. Rusty managed to nod his thanks, taken aback by such unexpected praise. Her next words surprised him even more. I have been wondering how you would perform out here, beyond the two-leg place. We patrol this border frequently, so I have often seen you sitting on your boundary, staring out into the forest. And now, at last, you have dared to place your paws here. Blue Star stared at Rusty thoughtfully. You do seem to have sharp eyes. You would do... You would have caught the mouse if you had not hesitated so long. Really? Rusty stammered. Lionheart spoke now. His deep meow was respectful but innocent, insistent. Blue Star, this is a kitty pet. He should not be hunting in ThunderClan territory. Send him home to his two legs. Rusty prickled at Lionheart's dismissive words. Send me home, he mewed impatiently. Blue Star's word has made him glow with pride. She had noticed him. She had been impressed by him. But I've only come here to hunt for a mouse or two. I'm sure there's enough to go around. Blue Star had turned her head to acknowledge Lionheart's words. Now her gaze snapped back to Rusty. Her blue eyes were blazing with anger. There's never enough to go around, she spat. If you didn't live such a soft, overfed life, you would know that. Rusty was confused by Blue Star's sudden range, but one, one glance at the horrified look on Graypaw's face was enough to tell him he had spoken too freely. Lionheart stepped to his leader's side. Both warriors loomed over him now. Rusty looked into Blue Star's threatening stare and his pride dissolved. These were not cozy fireside cats he was dealing with. They were mean, hungry cats. We're probably going to finish what Graypaw had started. Alright, I think the voices are working pretty well. Um, time to move on to chapter two. Let's, let's get going. Well, his blue star, her face only a mouth length, mouse length from his now. Lionheart remained silent as he towered over Rusty. His He flattened his ears and crouched under the golden warrior's cold stare. His fur prickled uncomfortably. I am no threat to your clan, he mewed, looking down at his trembling paws. You threaten our clan whenever you take our food. You threaten our clan whenever you take our food, yowled Blue Star. You have plenty of food in your two-legged nest already. You come here only to hunt for sport, but we hunt to survive. The truth of the warrior queen's words pierced Rusty like a blackthorn, and suddenly he understood her anger. He stopped trembling, sat up, and strained his ears. He raised his eyes to meet hers. I had not thought of it that way before. I am sorry. He mailed solemnly. I will not hunt here again. Blue Star let her hackles fall and signaled to Lionheart to step back. You are an unusual kitty pet, Rusty. She mailed. Graypaw's sigh of relief made Rusty's ears twitch. He heard the approval in Blue Star's voice and noticed as she swapped a meaningful glance with Lionheart. The look made him curious. What flashed between the two warriors? Quietly, he asked. Is survival really here really so hard? Our territory covers only part of the forest, answered Blue Star. We compete with other clans for what we have, and this year late new leaf means prey is scarce. Is your clan very big? Rusty meowed, his eyes wide. Big enough, replied Blue Star. Our territory can support us, but there is no prey left over. Are you all warriors, then? Rusty mewed. Blue Star's guarded answers were just making him more and more curious. 
Lionheart answered him, Some are warriors, some are too young or too old to be, or too busy to be caring for kits to hunt. And you all live in Chapre together? Rusty murmured in awe, thinking a little guiltily of his own easy, selfish life. Lustar looked again at Lionheart. The golden tabby stared back at her steadily. At last she returned, her gaze to Rusty and meowed. Perhaps you should find out these things for yourself. Would you like to join ThunderClan? Rusty was so surprised he couldn't speak. Blue Star went on. If you did, you would train with Graypaw to become a clan warrior. But kitty pets can't be warriors, Graypaw blurted out. They don't have warrior blood. A sad look clouded Blue Star's eyes. Warrior blood, she echoed with a sigh. Too much of that has been spilled lately. Blue Star fell silent, and Lionheart meowed. Blue Star is only offering your training, young kit. There is no guarantee you would become a full warrior. It might prove too difficult for you. After all, you are used to a comfortable life. Rusty was stung by Lionheart's words. He swung his head around to face the gold tabby. Why offer me the chance, then? But it was Blue Star who answered. You are right to question our motives, young one. The fact is, ThunderClan needs more warriors. Understand that Blue Star does not make this offer lightly, warned Lionheart. If you, you wish to train with us, we will have to take you into our clan. You must either live with us and respect our ways, or return to your two lake place and never come back. You cannot live with a paw in each world. A cool breeze stirred the undergrowth, ruffling Rusty's fur. He shivered, not with the cold but with excitement at the incredible possibilities opening up in front of him. Are you wondering if it's worth giving up your comfortable li kitty pet life? Asked Blue Star gently. But do you realize the price you will pay for your warmth and food? Rusty looked at her, puzzled. Surely his encounter with these cats had proved to him just how easy and luxurious his life was. I could tell that you were still a tom. Blue Star added, despite the two leg stench that cleaks to your fur. What do you mean, still a tom? You haven't yet been taken by the two legs to see the cutter, viewed Blue Star gravely. You would be di very different then. Not quite so keen to fight a clan cat, I would suspect. Rusty was confused. He suddenly thought of Henry, who became fat and lazy since his visit to the vet. Was that what Blue Star meant by the cutter? The clan may not be able to offer you such easy food or warmth, continued Blue Star. In the season of leaf bear, nights in the forest can be cruel. The clan will demand great loyalty and hard work. You will be expected to protect the clan with your life if necessary. And there are many mouths to feed, but the rewards are great. You will remain a tom. You get to stay a guy. All right. You will be trained in the ways of the wild. You will learn what it is to be a real cat. The strength and the fellowship of the clan will always be with you, even when you hunt alone. Rusty's head reeled. Blue Star seems to be offering him the life he had lived so many times and so tantalizingly in his dreams. But could he live like that for real? Lionheart interrupted his thoughts. Come, Blue Star. Let's not waste any more time here. You must be ready to join the other patrol at Moon High. Tiger Claw will wonder what has become of us. He stood up and flicked his tail expectantly. Wait, Rusty meowed. Can I think about your offer? Blue Star looked at him for a long moment and nodded. Lionheart will be here tomorrow at Sun High, she told him. Give him your answer then. Blue Star murmured a low signal, and in a single movement, the three cats turned and disappeared into the undergrowth. Rusty blinked. He stared, excited, uncertain up past the ferns that encircled him through the canopy of leaves to the stars that glittered in the clear sky. The scent of the clan cats still hung heavy in the evening air, and as Rusty turned and headed for home, he felt a strange sensation inside him, tugging him back into the depths of the forest. His fur prickled deliciously in the light wind, and the rustling leaves seemed to whisper his name into the shadows. Alright, I had to interrupt, because... <laughs> You get, oh my god, you get to stay a guy? That's awesome! It's like the best! 
Alright, so yeah, I'm just going to start leaving the errors in because uh, I'm tired of editing them out. If they're like really bad, like really, really bad, I will go find them. Like say it's really loud or it's really quiet, I'll go fix that. But anyway, on to chapter 3. That morning, as Rusty slept off his night's wanderings, the mouse dream came again, even more vivid than before. Free of his collar beneath the moon, he stalked the timid creature, but this time he was aware of being watched. Shining from the shadows of the forest, he saw dozens of yellow eyes. The clan cats had entered his dream world. Rusty woke, blinking in the bright sunshine that was streaming across the kitchen floor. His fur felt heavy and thick with warmth. His food bowl had been topped up, and his water bowl rinsed out and filled with bitter-tasting two-leg water. Rusty preferred drinking from puddles outside, but when it was hot or he was very thirsty, he had to admit it was easier to lap up the water indoors. Could he really abandon this comfortable life? He ate, then pushed his way out of the cat flap into the gar garden. The day promised to be warm, and the garden was heavy with the smell of early blossoms. Hello, Rusty, Mew mewed a voice from the fence. It was Smudge. You should have been awake an hour ago. The baby sparrows were stre stretching their wings. Did you catch any? Rusty asked. Smudge yawned and licked his nose. Couldn't be bothered. I had already eaten enough at home. Anyway, why weren't you out earlier? Yesterday you were complaining about Henry sleeping his time away, and today you're not much better yourself. Rusty sat down on the cool earth beside the fence and curled his tail neatly over his front paws. I was in the woods last night, he reminded his friend. At once he felt the blood stir in his veins and his fur stiffen. Smudge looked down at him, his eyes wide. Oh yes, I forgot. How was it? Did you catch anything? Or did anything catch you? Rusty paused, not sure how to tell his old friend what had happened. I met some wild cats, he began. What? Smudge was clearly shocked. Did you get into a fight? Sort of. Rusty could feel the energy surging through his body again as he recalled the strength and power of the clan cats. Were you hurt? What happened? Smudge prompted him eagerly. There were three of them, bigger and stronger than any of us. And you fought all three of them? Smudge interrupted, his tail twitching with excitement. No! Rusty mewed hastily. Just the youngest one. The other two came later. How come they didn't shred you into pieces? They just wanted me to leave their territory. But then... Rusty hesitated. What? He smudge imp smudge impatiently. They asked me to join their clan. Smudge whiskers quivered disbelievingly. They did. Rusty insisted. Why would they do that? I don't know. Rusty admitted. I think they need extra paws in their clan. Sounds a bit odd to me. Smudge mewed, mewed doubtfully. I wouldn't trust them if I were you. Rusty looked at Smudge. His black and white friend had never shown any interest in venturing into the woods. He was perfectly content living with his housefolk. He would never understand the restless longing that Rusty's dreams stirred in him night after night. But I do trust them, Rusty purred softly, and I've made up my mind. I'm going to join them. Smudge scrambled down the fence and stood in front of Rusty. Please don't go, Rusty, he mewed in alarm. Might never see you again. Rusty nudged him affectionately with his head. Don't worry. My housefolk will get another cat. You'll get on with him fine. Oh my god, did he just fucking assume and be a guy? Oh! You get along with everyone. But it won't be the same, Smudge wailed. Rusty twitched his tail impatiently. That's just the point. If I stay around here until they take me to the cutter, I won't be the same either. Smudge looked puzzled. The cutter, he echoed, the vet, Rusty explained, to be altered, like Henry was. Smudge shrugged, shru Smudge shrugged, <laughs> Smudge shrugged, Smudge shrugged, Smudge shrugged, Smudge shrugged and stared down at his paws. But Henry's all right, he mumbled. I mean, I know he's a bit lazier now, but he's not unhappy. We could still have fun. Rusty felt his heart fill with sadness at the thought of leaving his friend. I'm sorry, Smudge. I'll miss you. But I have to go. Smudge didn't reply, but stepped step forward and gently touched Rusty's nose with his own. Fair enough. I can see I can't stop you, but at least let's spend one more morning together. 
Rusty found himself enjoying the morning even more than usual, the, visiting his old haunts with Smudge, sharing words with the cats he had grown up with. Every one of his senses felt supercharged, as if he were poised before a huge jump. As Sun High approached, Rusty grew more and more impatient to see if Lionheart would be really waiting for him. The idle buzz of meows from his old friend seemed to fade into the background as all his senses strained towards the woods. Rusty jumped from his garden fence for the last time and crept into the woods. He had said his goodbyes to Smudge. Now all, that, all his thoughts were focused on the forest and the cats who lived in it. As he approached the spot where he had met with the clan cats the night before, he sat down and tasted the air. Tall trees shielded the ground from the midday sunshine, making it comfortably cool. Here and there, a patch of sunlight shone through a gap in the leaves and lit up the forest floor. Rusty could smell the same cat scent as last night, but he had no idea whether it was old or new. He lifted his head and sniffed uncertainly. You have a lot to learn, mewed a deep voice. Even the tiniest clan cat knows when another cat is nearby. Rusty saw a pair of green eyes glinting from beneath a bramble bush. Now he recognized the scent. It was Lionheart. Can you tell if I am alone? He asked the golden tabby, stepping into the light. Hastily, Rusty sniffed again. The sense of blue star and great power still there, but not as strong as the previous ones. Hesitantly, he mewed. Blue star and great paw aren't with you this time. That's right, meowed Lionheart. But someone else is. Rusty stiffened as the second clan cat strode into the clearing. This is White Storm, purred Lionheart, one of Thunderclan's senior warriors. R Rusty looked at Tom and felt his spine tingle with cold fear. Is this a trap? Long bodied, bodied and muscular. White Storm stood in front of Rusty and gazed down at him. His white coat was thick and unmarked, and his eyes were the yellow of sunbaked sand. Rusty flattened his ears warily and tensed his muscles in preparation for a fight. Relax, before your fear sets bring unwanted attention, growled Lionheart. We are here only to take you to our camp. I think that, yeah, that's a better, better voice. Rusty sat very still, hardly daring to breathe as White Storm stretched his nose forward and gave him a curious sniff. Hello, young one, murmured the white cat. I've heard a lot about you. Come, we can speak more once we are in the camp, ordered Lionheart. And without pausing, he and White Storm leaped away into the undergrowth. Rusty jumped to his paws and followed as quickly as he could. The two warriors made no allowances for Rusty as they sped through the forest. Before long, he was struggling to keep up. Their base pace barely slowed as they led him over fallen trees that they cleared in a single leap, but which... Rusty had to scramble over paw, paw by paw, pass through sharply fragrant pine trees, where they had to jump across deep gullies churned up by a two-legged tree eater. From the safety of his garden fence, Rusty had often heard it roaring and snarling in the distance. One gully was too wide to jump, half filled with slimy, foul-smelling water. The clan cats waded through without hesitating. Rusty had never put a paw in water before, but he was determined not to show any signs of weakness, so he narrowed his eyes and followed, trying to ignore the uncomfortable wetness that soaked his belly fur. At last, Lionheart and Whitestorm paused. Rusty skidded to a halt behind them and stood painting while the two warriors stepped onto a rock that rested on the small edge of onto the edge of a small ravine. We are very close to camp now, meowed Lionheart. Rusty strained to see any signs of life. Moving leaves, a glimpse of fur among the bushes below, but his eyes saw nothing except the same undergrowth that covered the rest of the forest floor. Use your nose. You must be able to scent it, hissed White Storm impatiently. Rusty closed his eyes and sniffed. White Storm was right. The scent here was very different from the cat scent he was used to. The air smelled stronger, speaking of many, many different cats. He nodded thoughtfully and announced, I can smell cats. I heard and White Storm exchanged amused looks. There will come a time, if you are accepted into the clan, will you know each cat sent by name? Lionheart meowed, Follow me! He led the way nimbly down the boulders to the bottom of the ravine, and pushed his way through a thick patch of gorse. Rusty followed, and White Storm took up the rear. As his side scraped against the prickly gorse, Rusty looked down and noticed that the grass beneath his paws was flat into a broad, strong melling track. This must be the main entrance into the camp, he thought. Beyond the gorse, a clearing opened up. The ground at the center was bare, hard earth, shaped of many generations of paw steps. 
This camp had been here a long time. The clearing was dappled by sunshine, and the air felt warm and still. Rusty looked around, his eyes wide. My God, how many, how many times does it say eyes wide? Eyes widen. Ooh, ooh, what's this? Eyes widen. Is this your bulge? <laughs> God damn. Uh, excuse me. There were cats everywhere, sitting alone or in, gro in groups, sharing food or purring quietly as they groomed one another. Just after sun high, when the day is hottest, it is a time for sharing tongues. Mm. Kiss time, kiss time, Lightheart explained. Sharing tongues, Rusty echoed. Clan cats always spend time grooming each other and sharing the news of the day, Whitestorm told him. We call it sharing tongues. It is a custom that binds the members of the clan together. The cats had obviously smelled Rusty's foreign scent, and for heads began to turn and stare curiously in his direction. Suddenly shy of meaning and cats gazed directly, Rusty looked around the clearing. It was edged with thick grass, dotted with tree stumps and a fallen tree. A thick current of ferns and gorse shielded the camp from the rest of the woods. Over there. Over there, meowed Lionheart, flicking his tail towards the impenetrable looking tangle of brambles, is the nursery, where the kits are cared for. Rusty swiveled his ears towards the bushes. He couldn't see through the knot of prickly branches, but he could hear the mewling of several kittens from somewhere inside. As he watched, a ginger she-cat squirmed out through a small gap in the front. That must be one of the queens, Rusty thought. A tabby queen with a distinctive black markings appeared around the bramble bush. The two she-cats exchanged a friendly look between the ears before the tabby, tabby slipped inside the nursery, murmuring to the squealing kits. The care of our kits is shared by all the queens, meowed Lionheart. All cats serve the clan. Loyalty to the clan is the first law in our warrior code, a lesson you must learn quickly if you wish to stay with us. Here comes Blue Star, meowed White Storm, sniffing the air. Rusty sniffed the air too, and was pleased that he was able to recognize the scent of a gray she cat a moment before she appeared from the shadow of a large boulder that lay beside them at the head of the clearing. He came, Blue Star purred, addressing the warriors. White Storm replied. Lionheart was convinced he would not. Rusty noticed the tip of Blue Star's twitch, tail twitch impatiently. Well, what do you think of him? She asked. He kept up well on the return journey, despite his puny size, White Storm admitted. He certainly seemed strong for our kitty pet. So it is agreed? Blue Star looked at Lionheart and White Storm. Both cats nodded. And I shall announce his arrival to the clan. Blue Star leaped up onto the boulder and yowled. Let all those cats old enough to to catch their own prey join here beneath the high lip. Oh, fuck, I need to redo this because it's an important scene. Let all those cats old enough to catch their own prey join here beneath the high rock for a clan meeting. Her clear call brought all the cats trotting toward her, merging like liquid shadows from the edges of the clearing. Rusty stayed where he was, flanked by Lionheart and White Storm. The other cats settled themselves below the high rock and looked expectantly up at their leader. Rusty felt a rush of a relief as he recognized Greypaw's thick gray fur among the cats. Beside him sat a young tortoiseshell queen, her black tip tail tucked neatly over small white paws. A large dark gray tabby crouched behind them, black stripes on his fur looking like shadows on a moonlit forest floor. When the cats were still, Blue Star spoke. Thunderclan needs more warriors, she began. Never before have we had so few apprentices in training. It has been decided that Thunderclan will take in an outsider to train as a warrior. Rusty heard indignant mutterings erupt among the clan cats, but Blue Star silenced them with a firm yowl. I have found a cat who is willing to become an apprentice of Thunderclan. Lucky to become an apprentice, caterwauled a loud voice above the ripple of shot that spread through the cats. Rusty craned his neck and saw a pale tabby cat standing up and glaring defiantly at the leader. Blue Star ignored the tabby and addressed all of her clan. Lionheart and White Storm have met this young cat, and they agree with me that we should train with him, train him with the other apprentices. Rusty looked up at Lionheart, then back at the clan to find out. Find all eyes were on him now. His fur prickled and he swallowed nervously. There was silence for a moment. Rusty was sure they must be. All be able to hear his heart pulsing and smell his fear scent. 
Now a deafening crescendo of caterwauling rose from the crowd. Where does he come from? Which clan does he belong to? What a strange scent he carries! That's not the scent of any clan I know! And one yowl in particular sounded about ab out above the rest. Look at his collar! He's a kitty pet! It was the pale tabby again. One sick kitty pet, always a kitty pet! This clan needs wild born warriors to defend it. Not another soft mouth to feed! My heart bent down and hissed into Rusty's ear. That tabby. That tabby is. <laughs> That tabby is long tail. He f smells your fear. They all do. You must prove to him and the other cats that your fear won't hold you back. But Rusty couldn't move. How could he ever prove to these fierce cats that he wasn't just a kitty pet? The tabby continued to jeer at him. Your collar is a mark of the two legs, and that noisy jingling will make you a poor hunter at best. At worst, it will bring the two legs into our territory, looking for the poor lost kitty pet who fills the woods with this pitiful tinkling. All the cats yowl, howled in agreement. Longtail went on, well aware that he had the support of his audience. The noise of your treacherous bell will alert our enemies, even if your two-legged stench doesn't. Lionheart hissed in Rusty's ear once more. Do you back down from a challenge? Rusty still did not move, but this time he was trying to pinpoint Longtail's position. There he was, just behind a dusky brown queen. Rusty fly in his ears, narrow his eyes and hissing leaped through the startled class to fling himself onto his tormentor longtail was completely unprepared for rusty's attack he staggered sideways losing his footing on the hard baked earth filled with rage and desperate to prove himself rusty dug his claws deep into the tabby's cat's fur and sank in his teeth those subtle subtle rit rituals of swiping and boxing preceded this fight the two cats were locked in a screaming, writhing tussle that flipped and somersaulted through around the clearing at the heart of the camp. The other cats had to spring out of the way to avoid the screeching whirlwind of fur. As Rusty scratched and struggled, he was suddenly aware that he felt no fear, only exhilaration. Through the roaring of the blood in his ears, he could hear the cat around them wailing with excitement. Then Rusty felt his collar tighten around his neck. Longtail had gripped it between his teeth and was tugging and tugging hard. Rusty felt a terrible pressure at his throat. Unable to breathe, he started to panic. He writhed and twisted, but each movement only made the pressure worse. Retching and gulping for air, he summoned up all his strength and tried to pull away from Longtail's rip. And suddenly, with a loud snap, he was free. Longtail tumbled away from him. Rusty scrambled to his paws and looked around. Longtail was crouching three tail lengths away. And dangling from Longtail's mouth, Rusty saw his collar, mangled and broken. At once, Blue Star leaped down from the high rock and silenced the noisy crowd with a thunderous caterwaul. Rusty and Longtail remained fixed to the spot, gasping for breath. Clumps of fur hung from their ruffled coats. Rusty could feel a cut stinging above his eye. Longtail's left ear was badly torn, and blood dripped down his lean shoulders onto the dusty ground. They stared at each other, their hostility not yet spent. Boostar stepped forward and took the color from Longtail. She placed it on the ground in front of her and meowed, The newcomer has lost his two-legged collar in battle for his honor. Starclown has spoken its approval. This cat has been released from the hold of his two-legged owners and is free to join ThunderClan as an apprentice. Rusty looked at Blue Star solemnly and nodded his acceptance. He stood up and stepped forward into a shaft of sunshine, welcoming the warmth on his sore muscles. The pool of light blazed bright on his orange belt, making his fur glow. His Rusty lifted his head proudly and looked at the cats that surrounded him. This time, no cat argued or jeered. He had shown himself to be a worthy opponent in battle. Blue Star approached Rusty and placed the shredded collar on the ground in front of him. She touched his ear gently with her nose. You look like a brand of fire in the sunlight, she murmured. Her eyes flashed briefly as if her words had more meaning for her than Rusty knew. You have fought well. Then she turned to the clan and announced, From this day forward, until he has earned his warrior name, this apprentice will be called Firepaw, in an honor of his flame-colored coat. She stepped back, and with the other cats, waited silently for his next move. Without hesitating, Rusty turned and kicked dust and grass over his collar, as though burying his dirt. Longtail growled and limped out of the clearing toward a fern-shaded corner. The cats split into groups, murmuring to each other excitedly. Hey, Firepaw! Rusty heard Graypaw's friendly voice behind him. Firepaw! A thrill of pride surged through him at the sound of his new name. 
he turned to greet the gray apprentice with a welcoming sniff. Great fat fire paw, mewed gray paw. Especially for a kitty pet. Long tail's a warrior, although he just finished his training two months ago. That scar left you left on his ear won't let him forget you in a hurry. You spoiled his good looks, that for sure. Thanks, Great Pa, I replied. He put up quite a fight, though. <laughs> he licked it. Thanks, Great Pa, Fire Pa replied. He put up quite a fight, though. <laughs> Hoity toity toy. <laughs> He licked his front paw and began to wipe clean the deep scratch that stung above his eye. As he watched, he heard his new name again, echoing among the meows of the cats. Firepaw! Hey, Firepaw! Welcome, young Firepaw! <laughs> Give me that oh, good old welcome! Firepaw closed his eyes for a moment and let the voice wash over him. Good name, too! Good name, too! Greypaw mewed approvingly, jolting him away. Firepaw looked around. Where did Longtail creep off to? I think he was heading towards Spotted Leaf's den. <laughs> Greypaw tipped his head toward the fern enclosed corner Longtail had disappeared to. She's our medicine cat. Not bad looking either. Young and a lot prettier than most. I don't know if he's Australian or Texan, but one of the fucking two. <laughs> A low, low yowl to the, next to the two cats stopped Greypaw mid-speech. They both turned, and Firepaw recognized the powerful gray tabby cat who had sat behind Greypaw earlier. Doc Stripe, mewed gray stri Greypaw, dipping, dipping his head respectfully. The sleek Tom looked at Firepaw for a moment. Lucky your collar snapped when I did. Longtail is a young warrior, but I can't imagine him being beat by a kitty pet. He spat the word kitty pet scornfully, then turned and stopped off. Now, Dark Stripe, Grandpa hissed the Firepaw under his breath, is neither young nor pretty. Firepaw was about to agree with his new friend when he was interrupted by a warning yowl from an old gray cat sitting at the edge of the clearing. Smolius smells trouble! Grandpa meowed, immediately alert. Firepaw barely had time to look around before a young cat crashed through the bushes and into the camp. He was skinny, and apart from the white tip of his long, thin tail, jet black from head to toe. Graypaw gasped, I asked Ravenpaw, why is he alone? Where's Tigerclaw? Firepaw looked at Ravenpaw staring across the floor of the clearing. He was pantling, panting heavily. His coat was ruffled and dusty. His eyes were wild with fear. Who are Ravenpaw and Tigerclaw? Firepaw whispered to Graypaw as several other cats raced past him to greet the new arrival. Ravenpaw is an apprentice. Tigerclaw is his manor. Graypaw explained quickly. Ravenpaw went out with Tigerclaw and Redtail at sunrise on a mission against RiverClan. Lucky furball. Red t Redtail? Firepaw echoed. Thoroughly confused by all these names. Yeah, it's making it really easy for me trying to get all these voices. Blue Star's deputy, his gray paw. But why on earth has Ravencaw come back alone? He added to himself. He lifted his head to listen to Blue Star's as Blue Star stepped forward. Ravenpaw? The she cat spoke calmly, but a look of worry clouded her blue eyes. The uh, other cats drew back, curling their lips with anxiety. What has happened? Blue Star jumped onto the high rock and looked down at the trembling cap. Speak, Ravenpaw! Ravenpaw was still struggling for breath, and his sides heaved fitfully while the dust around him turned red with blood. But he still managed to scramble up onto the high rock and stand beside Blue Star. He turned to the crowd of eager faces that surrounded him and summoned enough breath to declare, Redtail is dead! Yeah, he's a child. He's a scaredy cat. Suck it up! I've read this book before. I know what happens. He's a fucking scared cat. Bitch. Fuck, fuck you. Fuck you. You stink. <laughs> Chapter 4. Let me get a drink of a Sprite real quick. Now we're about to hit that one hour mark. Poggers. We still got two chapters to go before I'm done with this video. Shocked yowls rose from the clan cats and echoed through the forest. 
Grandpa staggered slightly. His right foreleg glistened, wet with blood that flowed from the deep gash on his shoulder. We met, met, five River Clan warriors beside the stream, not far from the sunny rocks, he went on shakily. Okart was among them. Okart? Grandpa gasped beside Firepaw. He's the deputy of River Clan. He's one of the greatest warriors in the forest. Lucky Ravenpaw. Wish it could have been me. I'd have really. Graypaw was silenced by a fierce glance from the old Grey Tom who had first sensed Graypaw, Ravenpaw's return. Ravenpaw, Firepaw return, oh God, turned his attention back to Ravenpaw. Redtail warned Alcart to keep his hunting parties out of ThunderClan territory. He said the next River Clan warrior to be caught in ThunderClan territory would be killed. But Oak, Oakheart would not back down. He said his clan had to be fed, whatever we threatened. Ravenpaw paused to wheeze for breath. His wound was still bleeding heavily, and he stood awkwardly to keep the weight off his shoulder. Page one turned. That's when the River Clan cats attacked. It was hard to see what was happening. It, the fighting was vicious. I saw Oakheart had Redtail pinned to the ground, but then Redtail. Suddenly, Ravenpaw's eyes rolled in his head, and he lurched sideways. Half scrambling, half falling, he slithered off the high rock and collapsed on the ground below. A ginger queen bounded toward him and crouched at his side. She licked his cheek briefly and called out, Spotted Leaf! Out of the fern-shaded corner trotted the pretty tortoise shell Firepaw had seen, noticed sitting beside Graypaw earlier. She hurried over to Ravenpaw and mewed for the queen to stand back. And she used her small pink nose to roll the apprentice over so that she could get take a good look at the wound. She glanced up and meowed, It's all right to grow with the father. His wounds are fatal, but I'll need to fetch some cobwebs to stop the bleeding. As Spotted Leaf sprinted back to her den, the hushed silence in the clearing was broken by a mournful howl. All eyes turned to the direction it had come from. A massive dark brown tabby staggered through the gorse tunnel. Between his sharp teeth, the warrior held not prey, but the lifeless body of another cat. He dragged the tattered creature into the center of the clearing. Firepaw craned his neck and glimpsed a flash of bright ginger tail hanging limply in the dust. Shock rippled through the clan like a chill breeze. Beside Firepaw, Graypaw dropped into a crouch as grease swept over him. Red tail! <laughs> How did this happen, Tigerclaw? demanded Blue Star from her position on the high rock. Tigerclaw let the scruff of Redtail's neck fall from his mouth. He looked steadily back at, back at Blue Star. He died with honor, struck down by Oakheart. I couldn't save him, but I managed to. Mm, I don't like that voice. I need a new one. Redo, redo. He died with honor, struck down by Oakheart. I couldn't save him, but I managed to take Oakheart's life. While he was still gloating over his victory. Tigerstar's voice was strong and deep. Redtail's death was not in vain, for I doubt we'll see River Clan hunters in her territory again. Firepaw glanced at Graypaw. The apprentice's eyes were dark with sadness. After a moment's pause, several of the other cats moved forward to lick Redtail's bedraggled fur. They groomed, they purred, hushed phrases to the dead warrior. As they groomed, they purred hushed phrases to the dead warrior. I don't know how you purr a word. Firepaw whispered in Graypaw's ears. What are they doing? Graypaw didn't take his eyes off the dead cat as he replied. His spirit may have left to join the Star Clan, but the clan will tear tongues with Red Kale one last time. Star Clan? Firepaw echoed. It's the tribe of heavenly warriors that watches over all clan cats. You can see them in Silverpelt. Firepaw looked so confused, so Graypaw explained. Silverpelt is that thick band of stars you see each night stretching across the sky. Each star is a star clan warrior. Redtail will be among them tonight. Firepaw nodded, and Graypaw stepped forward to share tongues with his dead deputy. Blue Star had remained silent while the first cats came to pay their respects to Redtail. Now she leaped down from the high rock and walked slowly towards Redtail's body. The other cats retreated and watched as their leader crouched down to share tongues with their ol her old comrade one last time. When she finished, she raised her head and spoke. Her voice was low and thick with grief, and the cat clan listened in silence. Redtail was a brave warrior. 
His loyalty to ThunderClan could never be doubted. I always relied on his judgment, for it bore witness to the needs of the clan. It was never swayed by self-interest or pride. He would have made a fine leader. Then she lowered herself onto her belly, her head bowed, and her head paws stretched neatly before her. And silently she grieved for her lost friend. Several other cats came and lay down beside her, their bowed heads and hunched backs echoing her mournful pose. Firepaw watched. He had not known Redtail, but he couldn't help feeling moved as he, as he witnessed the clan mourn. Graypaw came and stood beside him again. Dustpaw will be sad, he remarked. Dustpaw? Redtail's Prentice, that brown striped tabby over there. Wonder who his new mentor will be. Firepaw glanced over at the small tom who squatted near Redtail's body, staring at the unseeing ground. Staring unseeing at the ground. Firepaw looked past them to the clan leader. How long will Blue Star sit with him? He asked. Probably the whole night, replied Graypaw. Redtail was her deputy for many, many moons. She won't want to let him go too quickly. He was one of the best warriors. Not as big and as powerful as Tigerclaw or Lionheart, but quick and clever. Firepaw looked at Tigerclaw, admiring the strength that swelled in his powerful muscles and broad head. His massive body showed signs of his warrior life. One of his ears was split into a deep V shape, and a thick scar sliced the bridge of his nose. Ah, we saw that earlier. Mmm, mmm, nice. Saw that scar earlier. Mm, nice. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> suddenly, Tiger, Tiger. Suddenly, Tiger Claw stood up and stalked over to Ravenpaw. Spottleleaf was crouching beside Tiger Claw's wounded apprentice, using her teeth and front paws to press wads of cobweb onto his shoulder root. Firepaw leaned toward Graypaw and asked, "What's Spottleleaf doing? Stopping the bleed? Stopping the bleeding?" It looks like a nasty cut, and Ravenpaw seemed really shaken up. He's always been a bit jumpy, but I've never seen this bad before. Let's go and see if he's woken up yet. They made their way through the grieving cats toward the spot where Ravenpaw lay and settled themselves a respectful distance away to wait until Tigerclaw had finished speaking. So spotted leaf. Tigerclaw addressed the tortoise shell with a confident meow. How is he? Do you think you can save him? I spent a lot of time training him up, and I don't want my efforts to be wasted at the first battle. Spotted Leaf didn't look up from her patient as she replied, Yes, a pity if all your valuable training, he dies in his first fight, eh? His, I, his first fight, eh? C8, D8, N8, that spells Canada, eh? Firepaw could hear a teasing purr in her soft mew. Will he live? Tigerclaw demanded. Of course, he just needs to rest. Tigerclaw snored in and looked down at the motionless black shape. He jabbed Ravenpaw with his front claws. Come on then, get up. Ravenpaw didn't move. Look at the length of that claw, Firepaw hissed. Too right, replied Fire Graypaw with a feeling. I know I wouldn't want to get into a fight with him. Not so fast, Tiger Claw. Spider Leaf placed her paw over t Tiger Claw's sharp talon and gently moved it away. This apprentice needs to keep as still as possible until the cut has healed. We don't want him opening his wound by jumping about trying to please you. Leave him alone. Firepaw found himself holding his breath as he waited for Tiger Claw's reaction. He guessed that few cats dared to give orders to the warrior like that. The big tabby stiffened. It seemed to seemed about to speak when Spotted Leaf mewed teasingly. Even you know better to argue with a medicine cat, Tiger Claw. Tiger Claw's eyes flashed with the little tortoise shell's words. I wouldn't dare argue with you, dear Spotted Leaf. He purred. He turned to leave and caught sight of Graypaw and Firepaw. Who's this? He asked Graypaw, towering above them. He's the new apprentice, Graypaw mewed. He smells like a kitty pet, snorted the warrior. I was a house cat, Firepaw mewed boldly. But I'm going to be trained to be a warrior. Tiger looked at him with a sudden interest. Ah, uh, yes, now I remember. Blue Star mentioned she had stumbled across some stray kitty pet. So she's actually going to try you out, is she? 
Firepaw sat up very straight, anxious to impress this distinguished clan warrior. That's right, he mewed respectfully. Tiger caught eyed him thoughtfully. Then I shall watch your progress with interest. Firepaw puffed his chest out proudly as Tigerclaw stalked away. Do you think he liked me? I don't think Tigerclaw likes any apprentices. This doesn't seem right. I don't think Tigerclaw likes any apprentices, whispered Graypaw. Then, just then, Riverpaw stirred, Ravenpaw stirred and twitched his ears. Has he gone? He mumbled. Who? Tigerclaw? Replied Graypaw, trying toward him. Yup, he's gone. Hi there. Firepaw began, about to introduce himself. Go away, both of you. Suddenly protested. How am I meant to help this cat with all these interruptions? She impatiently flicked her tail at Graypaw and Firepaw and pushed her way between them and her patient. Firepaw realized she was serious, despite the lively glimmer in her warm amber eyes. Come on then, Firepaw, mused Graypaw. I'll show you around. See you later, Ravenpaw. Ravenpaw, Ravenpaw, Ravenpaw. The two cats left Spy Leaf with Ravenpaw and walked across the clearing. Graypaw looked thoughtful. He was clearly taking his duties as a guide very seriously. You know the High Rock already. You know the high rock already, he began, flicking his tail towards the big, smooth rock. Blue Star always addresses the clan from there. Her den is down there. He lifted his nose toward a down, lift, down, lift, is down there. He lifted. Okay, okay, yep, yeah, this is okay, this is good. He lifted his nose toward a hollow in the side of the high rock. Her den was carved out many moons ago by an ancient stream. Hanging like a dra draped entrance, sheltering the leader's nest from wind and rain. The warriors sleep over here, Graypaw went on. Firepaw followed him to a large bush a few paces away from the hide rock. There was a clear view from here, right down to the gorse entrance into the camp. The branches of the bush hung low, but Firepaw could see a sheltered space inside where the warriors made their nests. The senior warriors sleep nearest the center, where it's the warmest. Explained Graypaw. They usually share their fresh fuel together over by that clump of nettles. The younger warriors eat nearby. Sometimes they are invited to join the senior warriors for eating, which is a big honor. What about the other clan cats? Firepaw asked, fascinated but feeling rather overwhelmed by all the traditions and rituals of clan life. Well, the queens share warrior quarters when they work as warriors, but when they are expecting kits or nursing them, they stand in a nest near the nursery. <laughs> in a nest near the nursery. <laughs> the elders have their own place on the other side of the clearing. Come on, I'll show ya. Firepaw prodded after Graypaw across the clearing and past the shadowy corner where Spotleaf had her den. They stopped beside a fallen tree that sheltered a patch of lush grass. <laughs> Crouched among the soft greenery were four elderly clats tucked into a plump plump young rabbit. Nuspa and Sampa would have brought them that, whispered Graypa. One of their apprentices' duties is to catch fresh kill for the elders. Hello, youngster. One of the elders greeted Graypa. Hello, small ear, mewed Graypa, nodding respectfully. This must be our new apprentice, Firepaw, isn't it? Mewed a second time. His patchy fur was dark brown, and there was only a stump where his tail should have been. That's right, Firepaw replied, copying Graypaw's polite nod. I'm Halftail, uh, purred the brown tom. Welcome to the clan. Have you two eaten? You know, small ear. Small ear. Firepaw and Graypaw both shook their heads. Well, there's enough here. Graypaw and Sampaw. <laughs> Graypaw and Sampaw. No. Dustpaw and Sampaw are turning into fine hunters. Would you mind if these youngsters shared a mouse one eye? The pale green queen. Gray queen who lay beside them, shook her head. Firepaw noticed one of her eyes was clouded and sightless. What about you, Dappletail? The other elder toward a shill she-cat with a gray muscle, mute voice, cracked with age. Of course not. Thank you, mewed Graypaw eagerly. He stepped forward and took a large mouse from the pile of prey and then dropped it at Firepaw's feet. You still haven't tasted mouse? he asked. No, Firepaw admitted. 
suddenly felt excited by the warm smells that were rising from this piece of fresh kill. His whole body quivered at the thought of sharing his first real food as clan member. In that case, you can have first bite. Just save me some. Graypaw dipped his head and stood back to give Firepaw room. Firepaw crouched down and took a large bite from the mouse. It was juicy and tender, and sang with the flavors of the forest. What do you think? asked Graypaw. Fantastic! mumbled Firepaw, his mouth still full. Move over, then! mewed Graypaw, stepping forward and bending over his, and his head to take a bite. As the two apprentices shared the mouse, they listened to the elders talk among themselves. How long before Blue Star appoints a new deputy? asked Small Ear. What'd you say, Small Ear? mewed One Eye. I think your hearing has become as poor as your eyesight, snapped Small Ear impatiently. I said, how long before Blue Star appoints a new deputy? When I, when I ignored Small Ear's irritating reply and spoke instead to the Twitter shell queen, Dappletail. Do you remember the day, many moons ago, when Blue Star herself was appointed deputy? Deputil mewed earnestly. Oh, yes. It was not long after she lost her kits. She'll not be happy to uh, ha be appointing a new deputy, Smalley observed. Redtail served her long and well, but she'll need to make her end up quickly. According to clan custom, the choice has to be made before Moon High after the death of the old deputy. At least this time, the choice is obvious. Mewed Halftail. Firepaw raised his head and looked around the clearing. Who could Halftail mean? To Firepaw, all the warriors looked worthy of becoming deputy. Perhaps he meant Tigerclaw after all. He had avenged. T Perhaps he meant Tigerclaw. After all, he had avenged Redtail's death. Tigerclaw was sitting not far off, his ears angled towards the elder's conversation. As Firepaw stretched with his tongue to lick the last traces of mouse from his whiskers. Blue Star's voice called from the high rock. Redtail's body still lay in the clearing below, pale gray in the fading light. A new deputy must be appointed, she meowed. But first, let us give thanks to Star Clan for the life of Redtail. Tonight he sits with his fellow warriors among the stars. Silence fell as the cats looked up into the sky, which was beginning to darken as evening crept over the forest. And now I shall name Thunder Clan's new deputy, Blue Star continued. I say these words before the body of Redtail, so that his spirit may hear and approve my choice. Firepaw looked at Tigerclaw. He couldn't help but noticing the hunger in the big warrior's amber eyes as he stood up at the high rock. Lionheart will be the Meow Blue Star will be the new deputy of Thunderclan. Firepaw was curious to see Tigerclaw's reaction, but the dark warrior's face revealed nothing as he moved to congratulate Lionheart with a nudge so hearty that it almost pushed the great golden tabby off his balance. Why didn't she make Tigerclaw a deputy? Firepaw whispered to Graypaw. Probably because Lionheart has been a warrior longer, so he has a lot more experience. Graypaw murmured back, still looking at, up at Blue Star. Blue Star spoke again. Redtail was also mentored a young Dustpaw. Since there is, must be no delay in the training of our apprentices, I shall appoint Dustpaw's new mentor immediately. Darkstripe, you are ready for your first apprentice, so you will continue Dustpaw's training. You have had a fine mentor in Tigerclaw, so, and I expect you to pass on some of the excellent skills you were taught. The tabby warrior swelled with pride as he showed his acceptance with a solemn nod. He strode over to Dustpaw, bent his head, and rather awkwardly touched noses with his new apprentice. Dustpaw flicked his tail respectfully, but his eyes were dull with the grief for his lost mentor. Mustar raised her voice. I shall keep I shall keep, uh, I shall keep vigil with Redtail's body tonight, before we bury him at sunrise sunrise. She jumped down from the high rock and walked over to lie beside Redtail's body once more. Many of the other cats joined her, Dustpaw and Smallier among them. Should we sit with them, too? Firepaw suggested. He had to admit the idea didn't appeal to him much. It had been a busy, busy day, and he was beginning to feel tired. All he wanted to do was find somewhere warm and dry to curl up and sleep. Graypaw shook his head. No, only those who were closest to Redtail will share his final night. I'll show you where we sleep. Prentice's den is over here. Firepaw followed Graypaw to a thick bush of ferns that lay behind a mossy tree stump. All the apprentices share their fresh kill by this stump. All the apprentices share their fresh kill by this stump, Redpaw told him. How many apprentices are there? 
Firepaw asked. Not as many as usual. Not as many as usual. Just me, you, Ravenpaw, Dustpaw, Sandpaw. That's literally that's literally five people. I, I think that's plenty. <laughs> then again, five students. Well, there's like 20 adults, so. Yeah, five students. That's plenty. Shut up. As Greypaw and Firepaw settled themselves beside the tree stump, a young she-cat crawled out from beneath the ferns. Her coat was ginger, like Firepaw's, but much paler, with barely visible stripes of darker fur. <laughs> so here comes the new apprentice, she meowed, narrowing her eyes. Hello, Firepaw mewed. The young cat sniffed really. He smells like a kitty pet. Don't tell me I'm going to share my nest with that revolting stench. Firepaw felt rather taken aback. Since his fight with Longtail, all of the cats had been fr quite friendly. Maybe they just had been distracted by Ravenpaw's news, he thought. You'll have to excuse Sandpaw, apologies, Greypaw. I think she must have a furball stuck somewhere. She's not usually this bad temper. Psst. This bad. Sandpaw crossly. What kind of sentence is that? Hold on, youngsters. The deep voice of White Storm sounded behind the apprentices. Sam Paul, as my apprentice, I expect you to be a little more welcoming to this newcomer. Sam Paul held up her head and looked defiant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, White Storm. She purred, not sounding sorry at all. I just didn't expect to be trained with a kitty pet, that's all. I'm sure you'll get used to it, Sam Paul. Now, yeah, White Storm calmly. Now, it's getting late, and training starts early tomorrow. You three should get some sleep. He gave Sampa a stern look, and she nodded obediently. As he walked off, she spun around and vanished in the clump of ferns, sniffing once more as she brushed past Firepaw. With a flick of his tail, Greypaw invited Firepaw to follow him, and led the way after Sampa. Inside the sleeping area, the ground was lined with soft moss, and the pale moonlight turned everything a delicate shade of green. The area was fragrant with fern scent, and warmer than outside. Where do I sleep? Firepaw asked. Anywhere, just not so long as it's not near me," snarled Sandpaw, who's prying some moss with her paw. Snarled Sandpaw, who's was prying with some moss with her paw. It's fucking God, so many paw. <laughs> Graypaw and Firepaw exchanged glances, but said nothing. Firepaw raked together a pile of moss with his claws. When he had gathered his bed into a cozy nest. He circled until he was comfortable and settled down. His whole body felt drowsy with contentment. This was his home now. He was a member of Thunder Clan. Time for chapter five. All right, boys, let's do this. Hey, Firepaw, wake up. Graypaw's meow broke into Firepaw's dream. He had been chasing a squirrel up and up into the topmost branches of a tall oak. Train begins at sunrise. Dustpaw and Sandpaw are already up, Graypaw added urgently. Firepaw stretched sleepily, then remembered today was his first day of training. He leaped to his paws, his drowsiness evaporated as excitement surged through his veins. Graypaw was giving himself a hasty wash. Between licks, he meowed, I've just spoken to Lionheart. Ravenpaw won't be trained with us till his wound is better. He'll probably stay at Spawn and Leaf's den for another day or two. Dustpaw and Sandpaw are not hunting doing. So Lionheart thought you and I could train with him and Tigerclaw this morning. We'd better hurry, though, he added. They'll be waiting. Graypaw led Firepaw quickly through the gorse entrance of the camp and up the side of the rock-strewn valley. As they climbed over the crest of the ravine, a cool breeze ruffled over their fur. The fat white clouds raced across the blue sky overhead. Firepaw felt fierce joy well up inside him as he followed Graypaw down a tree-shaded slope and into a sandy hollow. Tigerclaw and Lionheart were indeed waiting seeing a few tail lengths apart on the sun-warm sand. In the future, I expect you to both be punctual. In the future, I expect you both to be punctual, growled Tiger Claw. Don't be too severe, Tiger Claw. It was a busy night last night. I expect they were tired, yelled Dianheart gently. You have not been yet, not yet been assigned a mentor, Sayapa, he went on. For now... Tireclaw and I will share your training. The Firepaw nodded enthusiastically, his tail head high, unable to disguise his delight at having two such 
having two such great warriors as his mentors. Come. Yo. <laughs> Meow, tired heart, impatiently. Today we are going to sh Today we are going to show you the edges of our territory so that you know where you will be hunting and what boundaries you need to protect. Great Bob, it won't do you any harm to remind yourself of the clan's outer limits. Without another word, Tiger Claw leaped up and bounded out of the sandy hollow. Lionheart nodded to Grey Paw and they took off with equal speed. Firepaw scrambled after them, his paws slipping on the soft sand. I need a drink after that. Oh my god. Such a big paragraph with that voice. You try and talk with Batman voice for a long time. It's not easy. I just don't remember how much this guy talks. So I hope I don't die. I don't have to change it. I hope so. I might end up changing it though. <sighs> the trees were thick in this part of the forest. Birch and ash trees overshadowed by mighty oaks. The ground was carpeted with crisp dead leaves that rustled beneath their paws. Tire claw paws the spray scent on a thick clump of ferns. Thir ferns. The other cat stopped beside him. There's a two-leg path. There's a two-leg path here, murmured Lionheart. Use your nose, Firepaw. Can you smell anything? Firepaw sniffed. There was a faint scent of two-leg and a stronger smell of a dog, familiar to him from his old home. A tiger claw. A two-leg has walked his dog along here, but they are gone now. He mewed. Oh. Okay. A two-leg has walked along his dog along here, but they are gone now. He mewed. Good. Now yeah, the line hurt. Do you think it is safe to cross? Firepaw sniffed again. The odors were weak and seemed overlaid with fresher forest smells. Yes, he replied. Tireclaw nodded and the four cats stalked out from beneath the ferns and crossed the sharp stones to the narrow two-leg path. The trees beyond were pine. They grew tall and straight, row after row. It was easy to walk silently here. The ground was thick with layers of dead needles, which prickled against Firepaw's pad pads but felt spongy underneath. There was no undergrowth here to hide in, and Firepaw sensed tension in the other cats as they stalked unprotected between the tree trunks. Two legs put these trees here, meowed yeah, Tyrahaw. They cut them down with foul smelling creatures, which brew enough fumes to make a kit go blind. Then they take the fallen trees to the tree cut place that lies near here. Firepaw stopped and listened for the roar of the tree eater. Which he had heard before. At the tree cut place will be silent for a few moons more till the time of Greenleaf, explained Grey Pond, noticing his paws. The cats padded on through the pine forest. Two Lake Place lies in that direction, meowed Tiger Claw, flicking his tail from his thick tail to one side. No doubt you can smell it, Firepaw. Today, however, we will head the other way. Eventually, they reached another two-leg path that marked the far edge of the pine forest. They quickly crossed, quickly crossed, over into the safe bushes of the oak woods beyond. But Firepaw still sensed anxiety in the other cats. We're approaching River Clan territory," whispered Graypaw. "The sun and rocks are over there." He pointed with his soft muzzle to a treeless mound of boulders. Firepaw felt his fur stand on end. This is where Redtail had been slain. Lionheart stopped by a flat gray rock. This is the boundary between ThunderClan and RiverClan territory. RiverClan rules the hunting grounds besides the Great River, he meowed. Breathe deeply, Firepaw. Firepaw. <laughs> the pungent smell of unfamiliar cats hit the roof of Firepaw's mouth. He was surprised how different it smelled from the warm cat scents of the ThunderClan camp, and he was also surprised to realize just how familiar and comforting the ThunderClan scents seemed to him already. That is the smell of RiverClan, Tigerclaw growled beside him. Remember it well. It will be the strongest at the boundary, because their warriors will have set marked the trees along here. With these words, the dark tabby lifted his tail and sprayed his own mark on the flat rock. They should stop using spray. That's gross. Like, I know they're pissing on it, but 
sprayed. Don't say spray. We'll follow this boundary line as it leads straight to four trees. Lionheart meowed. He set off quickly, away from sunny rocks, followed by Tigerclaw. Graypaw and Firepaw trotted after them. What is four trees? Firepaw panted. It is where our territories of all four clans meet, replied Graypaw. There are four great oaks there, as old as the clans. Be quiet, ordered Tigerclaw. Don't forget how close we are to enemy territory. The two apprentices fell silent, and Firepaw concentrated on walking silently. They crossed a shallow stream, keeping their paws dry by leaping from boulder to boulder across the Pepple Riverbed. By the time they reached Four Trees, Firepaw was feeling completely out of breath, and his paws ached. He wasn't used to traveling so far and so fast. He was quite relieved when Lionheart and Tigerclaw led them out of the thick woods and stopped at the brow of a bush-covered slope. It was sun high now. The clouds had cleared and the wind had dropped. Below, in the dazzling sunlight, stood four enormous oaks, their green crowns reaching almost to the top of the steep slope. As Greypaw told you, meowed Lionheart to Firepaw, this is four trees, where the territories of all four clans meet. Wind Clan governs the high ground ahead of us, where the sun sets. You won't be able to catch the sun today, the wind is blowing toward them, but you'll learn it soon enough. And Shadow Clan holds power over there, in the darkest part of the- And Shadow Clan holds power over there, in the darkest part of the forest, added Graypaw, flicking his head sideways. The elders say that the cold winds from the north blow over the Shadow Clans and chill their hearts. So many clans! Firefly exclaimed, it's so well organized, he added to himself, remembering Smudge's lurid tales of wildcats wreaking terror in the forest. You see now why prey is so precious, now Lionheart, or I must fight to protect what little we have. But that seems foolish. Why can't the clans work together and share their hunting grounds instead of fighting each other? Firepaw suggested boldly. A shocked silence greeted his words. Tigerclaw was the first to reply. That is treacherous thinking, Kitty Pet. He snapped. Don't be too fierce, Tigerclaw, warned Lionheart. The ways of the clan are new to this apprentice. He looked at Firepaw. You speak from your heart, young Firepaw. This will make you a stronger warrior one day. Tigerclaw growled. Or it might make him t give in to Kitty Pet weakness right at the moment of attack. Lionheart grants leafly at Tyra before he continued. The four clans do come together peacefully, in a gathering each moon. Here, he bent his head toward the four mighty oaks below, is where they meet. The truce lasts for as long as the moon is at its fullest. Then there must be a meeting very soon, Firepaw suggested, remembering how bright the moonlight had been the night before. Indeed there is, answered Lionheart, sounding impressed. Tonight, in fact, the gatherings are very important because they allow the clans to come in together in peace for one night. But you must understand that longer alliances bring more trouble than they're worth. It, it is our clan loyalty that makes us strong. Tiger climbed out in agreement. If you weaken that loyalty, you weaken our chances of survival. Firepot nodded. I understand. He mewed. Come on. F mew meowed Lionheart, standing up. Let's keep moving. They paced along the ridge of the valley where four trees stood. Now they were heading away from the sun as it began to sink in the afternoon sky. They crossed the stream at a place where it is narrow enough, enough to leap over in one jump. Firepaw sniffed the air. A new cat scent touched his mouth. Clan a new cat scent touched his mouth glands, strong and sour. Which clan is that? He asked. Shadow Clan, answered Tigercock grimly. We are traveling along their border. Keep your wits about you, Firepaw. Fresher sense mean that a Shadow Clan patrol is in the area. As Firepaw nodded, he heard a new noise. He stiffened, but the other class kept up their pace, heading straight for the ominous rumbling. What's that? He called, trying up to catch up with them. You'll see in a moment. You'll see in a moment, replied Lionheart. Firepaw peered through the trees ahead. They seemed to be getting thinner, letting in a broad band of sunlight. Are we at the edge of the woods? He asked, and he stopped and took a deep breath. The green forest scents were overlaid with 
other strange dark smells. This time it was not cat scent, but an odor that reminded him of his two leg home, and the rumbling was getting louder, a ceaseless roar that made the ground tremble and ached in Firepaw's ears. This is the Thunder Path. Yeah, Tiger Claw. By the way, this is a road. It's, it's a road. <laughs> Ever stand next to a highway? Like, fucking Christ, the cars are loud. Firepaw followed as Lionheart led them toward the edge of the forest. Then he sat down and let all four cats look out. Firepaw could see a gray path like a river, cutting its way through the forest. The hard gray stone stretched ahead of him so far that the trees on the other side seemed blurred and tiny. Firepaw shuddered at the bitter smell that rose from the path. Next time he leaped back, the next moment he leaped back, his fur bristling as a gigantic monster roared past. Car, it's a car, calm down. There's no monsters, trust me, there's no monsters. You don't have to be scared. The branches of the trees on either side flapped madly in the wind that chased the speeding monster. Firepaw stared around at the other cats, his eyes wide. Goddamn fucking eyes wide. <laughs> Unable to speak. He had seen paths like this before near his old two-leg home, but never this wide, nor with monsters no swift and fierce. Scared me too the first time, remarked Graypaw, but at least it helps keep Shadow Clan warriors from crossing into our territory. Thunderpath runs for many paw steps along our boundary line. And don't worry, those monsters never seem to leave the Thunderpath. You're fine as you're, you're fine as long as you don't go too near. It's time we return to camp, meowed Lionheart. You have seen all our boundaries now, but we'll avoid snake rocks, even though the way around is longer. An untrained apprentice was be easy prey for a snake. It's a, they call it an adder, but it's a snake. Trust me. I don't know why they called it an adder, but fucking pog. And I expect you were getting tired, Firepaw. Firepaw couldn't help but feeling relieved at the thought of returning to camp. His head was spinning with all the new smells and sights. And Lionheart was right. He was tired and hungry. He fell in behind Graypaw as the cats turned away from the thunderpath and headed back into the forest. The dewy sense of evening filled the air as Firepaw made his way through the gorse entrance into the ThunderClan camp. ThunderClan... Feshkill was waiting for them. Firepaw and Graypaw took their share from the pile that lay in the shady part of the clearing and carried it to the tree stump outside their quarters. Dustpaw and Sandpaw were already there, munching hungrily. Hi there, kitty pet. You dust paw, narrowing his eyes scornfully at Firepaw. Enjoy the food we caught for you. Who knows? You might even learn to catch your own own one day, sneered Sandpaw. Are you two still on hunting duty? asked Graypaw innocently. Never mind. We've been patrolling our territory borders. You'll be glad to know all is safe. I'm sure the other clans were terrified when they s smelled you two coming, yowled Dustpaw. They didn't even dare show their faces, retorted Graypaw, unable to hide his anger. Well, we'll ask them tonight, when we see them at the gather clan gathering, mewed Stampaw. Are you going? Firepaw blurted out, impressed in spite of the apprentice's hostility. Of course, replied Dustpaw loftily. It's a great honor, you know. But don't worry, we'll tell you all about it in the morning. <laughs> Graypaw ignored Dustpaw's gloating and started eating his fresh kill. Firepaw was hungry too and crouched down to eat. He couldn't help feeling a twinge of envy that Dustpaw and Sandpaw were actually going to meet the other clans tonight. A loud call from Blue Star made Firepaw look up. He watched several of the other clan warriors and elders gather in the clearing. It was time for the clan party to leave for the gathering. Dustpaw and Sandpaw leaped to their feet and trotted off to join the other cats. Bye, you two, called Sandpaw over his shoulder. Have a nice, quiet evening. The assembled cats stalked out of the camp entrance in single file, with Blue Star at the head. Her fur glowed like silver in the moonlight, and she looked calm and confident as she led her clan to the brief truce between old enemies. Have you, have you ever been to a gathering? Firepaw asked Graypaw wistfully. Not yet, replied Graypaw, crunching loudly on a mouse bone. But it won't be long now. Just you wait. All the apprentices got to go sometime. 
The two apprentices ate the rest of their meal in silence. When they had finished, Graypaw wandered over to Firepaw and began to groom his head. Together they washed, sharing tongues as Firepaw had seen the other cats do when he first arrived. Then, tired after the long trek, they pushed their way into their den. They settled down in their nest and quickly fell asleep. The following morning, Graypaw and Firepaw arrived early at the Sandy Hollow. They had crept out before Sandpaw and Dustpaw woke. Firepaw had been eager to hear about the gathering, but Graypaw had dragged him away. You'll hear all about it later if I know those two, he had mewed. You'll hear all about it later if I know those two, he had mewed. It promised to be another warm day, and this time Ravenpaw came to join them. Thanks to Spotleaf, his wound was healing well. Graypaw played around, scooping leaves into the air and leaping after them. Firepaw watched his tail twitching with amusement. Ravenpaw sat quietly at one side of the hollow, looking tense and unhappy. Cheer up, Ravenpaw, called Graypaw. I know you don't like training, but you're not usually this miserable. The sense of Lionheart and Tireclaw warned the apprentices of their approach, and Ravenpaw mewed hastily. I suppose I'm just worried about my shoulder getting hurt again. At that moment, Tireclaw emerged from the bushes, closely followed by Lionheart. Warriors should suffer their pain silently, growled Tireclaw. He looked Ravenpaw straight in the eye. You need to learn to hold your tongue. Ravenpaw flinched and dropped his eyes to the ground. Tireclaw's a bit grumpy today, Ravenpaw whispered in Firepaw's ear. Lionheart glanced at his apprentice sternly and announced, Today we are going to practice stalking. Now, is there a big difference between creeping up on a rabbit and creeping up on a mouse? Can any of you tell me why? Firepaw had no idea, and Ravenpaw seemed to have taken Tireclaw's tom into heart and was holding his tongue. Come on, snorted Tireclaw impatiently. It was Graypaw who answered, Because a rabbit will smell you before he sees you, but a mouse will feel your paw steps through the ground before he even smells you. Exactly, Graypaw. So what must you bear in mind when hunting mice? Step lightly, Firepaw suggested. Lionheart looked approvingly at him. Quite right, Firepaw. You must take all your weight into your haunches so that your paws make no impact on the forest floor. Let's try it. Firepaw watched as Graypaw and Ravenpaw immediately dropped into a stocking crouch. Nicely done, Graypaw, meowed Lionheart as the two apprentices began to move forward stealthily. Keep your rear down, Ravenpaw. You look like a duck, spat Tigerclaw. No, you try it, Firepaw. Firepaw crouched down and began to creep across the forest floor. He felt himself fall instinctively into the right position. As he stepped, as as he stepped forward, he silently and lightly, as silently and lightly as he could, he felt a glow of pride that his mus muscles responded so smoothly. Well, it's obvious you know nothing but softness," growled Tireclaw. "You stalk like a lumbering kitty pet. Do you think dinner is gonna come lie down in your food dish and wait to be eaten?" Firepaw sat up quickly as Tireclaw spoke, a little taken aback by his harsh words. He listened carefully to the warrior, determined to get everything right. His pace and forward movement will come later, but his crouch is perfectly balanced. Lionheart. Lionheart pointed out mildly. Which is better than Ravenpaw, I suppose, complained Tigerclaw. He cast a scornful look at the black cat. Even after two months of training, you're still putting on your weight on your left side. Ravenpaw looked even more dejected, and Firepaw couldn't stop himself from blurting out. His injuring is bothering him, that's all. Tigerclaw whipped his head around and glared at Firepaw. Injuries are a fact of life. You should be able to adapt, <laughs> improvise, adapt, overcome. Even you, Firepaw, you have learned something this morning. If Ravenpaw picked up things as quickly as you, he'd be a credit to me. It's to have an embarrassment. Imagine being shown up by a kitty pet. He spat angrily at his apprentice. Firepaw felt his fur prickle with discomfort. He couldn't meet Ravenpaw's eyes, so he looked down at his paws. Well, I'm more than a, more lopsided than a one-legged badger, Ravenpaw breaking off from his careful stocking to stagger comically across the clearing. 
I think I'll have to settle for hunting stupid mice. They won't stand a chance. I just wander up to them and sit on them until they surrender. <laughs> Concentrate, young grandpa. This is no time for your jokes. Bowed my heart sternly. Perhaps you might focus your mind better if you try out your stocking for real. All three apprentices looked up brightly. I want each one of you to try catching real prey, mailed Lionheart. Ravenpaw, you will look beside the owl tree. Graypaw, there might be something in that big bramble patch over there. And you, Firepaw, follow the rabbit track over that rise, and you'll find a dry bed of a winter stream. You may find something there. The three apprentices bounded away. Even Ravenpaw finding some extra energy in the, for this challenge. With a blood pounding in his ears, Firepaw crept slowly up over the rise. Sure enough... A stream bed cut through the trees ahead of him. In leaf fall, he guessed it would carry the rainwater away from the forest and into the great river that cut through River Clan territory. Now it was dry. Firepaw crept quietly down the bank and crouched on its sandy floor. Every sense felt on fire with tension. Suddenly, he scanned the empty stream for signs of life. He watched for any tiny movement. His mouth opened so he could pick up the small forest, smallest scent. His ears twisted forward. Then he smelled mouse. He recognized the order instantly, remembering his first taste the night before. Wild energy surged through him, but he remained motionless, trying desperately to pinpoint the prey. He strained his ears forward until he picked up the rapid pulsing of a tiny mouse heart. Then a flash of brown caught his eye. The creature was scrambling through the long grass that draped the edge of his uh, edges of the stream. Firepaw shifted closer, remembering to keep his weight on his haunches until he was within striking distance. Then he pushed back hard on his hind paws and sprang, kicking up sand as he rose. The mouse raced away, but Firepaw was quicker. He scooped it up in the air with one paw, threw it on the sandy stream bed, and lunged on top of it. He killed it quickly with one sharp bite. Firepaw carefully lifted the warm body between his teeth and returned with his tail held high to the hollow where Ironclaw and Lionheart waited. He had made his first kill. He was a true ThunderClan apprentice now. And that concludes chapter five. Uh, uh, if you somehow watched this entire thing, uh, good job. If you're just listening to this because a free audiobook, like, I mean, like, hey, let's spend money. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I will, I will for a fact finish this, at least this first book. Uh, project might end up just fucking going poof eventually. Um, uh, if I get bored of reading, but, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions about anything, just ask me in the comments below, uh, any rude remarks in the comments below will instantly get liked, because, <laughs> because why not, this is awful, and I don't know why I've done this, mostly because I just wanted to read, my throat's gonna be hurting for a long time, if you wanna send condolences or something, it'd be nice, but, uh, yeah, sometime in the future I'll be back with chapters 6 through 10.